Okay, this is your lecture for chapter 44 um, in pharmacology, thyroid and antithyroid drugs. And this chapter is going to be pretty straightforward um, and, and pretty easy to kind of put together because you have two classifications. You have thyroid medications, in other words, for hypothyroidism, and then you have antithyroid medications for hyperthyroidism. So let's take a look at the meds that you need to know. For hypothyroidism, it's one med, and it's levothyroxine, which is Synthroid. So levothyroxine is kind of a synthetic thyroid hormone, and the things that you need to know about it, it should be taken first thing in the morning on an empty stomach with a full glass of water, and the patient should be instructed not to take anything else at least 30 minutes after they take this, okay? So you don't want this mixed with anything. And believe it or not, when it comes to side effects, here's the thing that you need to know. There really aren't documented side effects in general. The biggest problem is that the dosage is not appropriate, and so the patient will have hyperthyroid symptoms. In other words, too much thyroid supplement, okay? And that's really what you need to know about levothyroxine. I'm going to go through the PowerPoint and talk a little bit more about the thyroid and thyroid hormones, okay? And then for your antithyroid medications, in other words, medications that we use to treat hyperthyroidism, you've got methimazole, propyl theoracil, and then one that's kind of all by itself because it's a medication and it's radioactivity, radioactive iodine. So we'll look at methimazole and propyl theuracil first. With both of those drugs, so they, they stifle the overproduction of thyroid hormone, and they can both cause pancytopenia. Pan in Latin means all or everything. So pancytopenia means decreased production of all blood cells. Low red blood cell count, so anemia. Low white blood cell count, so risk for infection. And low platelet count, risk for bleeding, okay? And I put that in capital letters because that's kind of a big deal. And then propyl theuracil can cause hepatotoxicity. In other words, it can be toxic to the liver. So, you know, it's something that you want to be aware of and, and be monitoring liver enzymes uh, like AST and ALT. The last thing is radioactive iodine. Radioactive iodine is iodine that is um, treated with radioactive waves. So the radioactivity that we use, for example, to take an x-ray, okay? radioactive waves like radiation therapy for people that have cancer. The goal with radioactive iodine is to actually destroy overgrown thyroid tissue. And by doing that, it usually will stifle the overproduction of the thyroid hormone. Um, sometimes it's used preoperatively. So if the patient is scheduled to have their thyroid gland removed, a thyroidectomy, we will pre-treat them with radioactive iodine to destroy as much of the thyroid tissue as we can before we remove it. And I'll explain the thyrotoxic crisis uh, in a little bit to help you understand, you know, why we want to pre-treat the patient before we go in and remove the thyroid gland. That's important to know. So when we talk about thyroid function, you know, what is the thyroid? So the thyroid gland is, as we said, sits right here, right at the throat, the base of the throat. It's the only endocrine gland that can be palpated. If you put your fingers here and ask the patient to hyperextend their neck and swallow, you should be able to feel it. If it's enlarged, you may actually see it. That's called a goiter. Sometimes a goiter can get so big that it's you can't miss it, okay? So the thyroid gland secretes thyroid hormones. That's T3 and T4. Okay, and they are in charge of your metabolic rate. But the whole process here is controlled by the pituitary, which is up here. The pituitary gland is the king or the father, however you want to call it, of the endocrine system because the pituitary gland runs the show. The pituitary gland secretes TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to make T3 and T4. Got it? It's going to make sense. I promise you. I'm not going to get into Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but I am going to talk about Graves' disease. 
Graves disease is the number one typical cause of hyperthyroidism and overactive thyroid. When a person has hyperthyroidism, here's what they look like. These are the clinical manifestations. So they have an increased metabolic rate. Okay, in other words, they're running at 150 miles an hour all the time. They have weight loss. They have nervousness, tachycardia, hypertension, tachypnea, anxiety. They'll feel flushed and warm all the time. They will lose weight. It doesn't even matter if they're eating. They can still be eating and still they're losing weight leaps and bounds because everything's running in overdrive. It takes a lot of gas to feed that metabolic rate. Um, two of the other things that you will see are exophthalmus, which is boing, the googly eyes, right? Wendy Williams' eyes, um, and goiter. And goiter, again, is an enlargement of the thyroid gland, sometimes so large that it, it it's, you know, you can't not notice it, okay? Graves' disease, we believe, is autoimmune in nature. I'm not 100% sure, but that is the current hypothesis. So in other words, the patient's own immune system is attacking, right? They're thyroid, so that's why they have these problems. So, the words that you need to know, euthyroid, that when EU is in front, that means normal or within normal limits, right? Goiter, that's an enlargement of the thyroid gland, swelling in front part of the neck, and it's usually because of Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. And then thyrotoxicosis, also known as a thyroid storm, okay? And that is just a severe episode of hyperactive thyroid, what's characterized by a high fever. I'm talking 104, 105, 106 even. Extreme tachycardia, you'll see heart rates, 130, 140, 150. Sometimes an altered mental status. Hypertension, blood pressures will be off the chain. So thyroid storm, a thyrotoxic crisis or thyrotoxicosis, they all mean the same thing. Hyperthyroidism at its worst. And the patient, this it can be fatal. So the patient is hospitalized when they are in a thyroid storm. And basically we have to number one, treat the symptoms. So we've got to get that fever down. We've got to get that heart rate down. We've got to get that blood pressure down before other things happen because of that. Okay. So that's what a thyrotoxic crisis or thyrotoxicosis is. Make sure you know those key terms that I just went over, okay? All right, so thyroid hormones, what do they do? They increase your metabolic rate for all your tissues, your heart, your respiratory rate, your body temperature, cardiac output, how much oxygen you use, and how quick your body metabolizes things you ingest like fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. That's why people with hyperactive thyroid are super, super skinny. Hypoactive, they tend to be obese, okay? And so with these thyroid hormones, and again, what's the drug? Levothyroxine. When we say thyroid hormone, the one that we are talking about is levothyroxine, aka Synthroid. The most common adverse reaction is basically like an overdose. In other words, while we're trying to titrate and get the person on the right dose of the drug, sometimes if they have too much of the drug, they will exhibit signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. And we don't want that, right? And any other adverse effects are pretty rare, right? Pretty rare. So just make sure you, you understand that with levothyroxine, the biggest concern is that they don't have the right dose. And it's too much of it. And now instead of hypothyroid, they're hyper, okay? Pretty straightforward. And so you, you, you use cautiously, of course, if the patient has um, any kind of an adrenal insufficiency, I won't get into that, um, cardiac disease, you want to be cautious, and pregnancy and lactation, okay? So they're the ones that I have highlighted. Um, you want to just be careful using these meds, but it's always risk versus benefit when it comes to medications. So, you know, you, you just make sure you keep that in mind. Um, we will talk about pre-administration assessment. Big deal with people that have hypothyroidism. Remember, everything is slow and low, slow and low. So you want to make sure you're taking vital signs, weighing your patient, and you know, looking at the patient generalized physical assessment to look at any other signs of hypothyroidism. In other words, they'll have constipation. They'll have dry skin. 
because everything's slow and low, okay? So your oil glands in your skin, your sebaceous glands, they're not really moving quickly, so your skin is dry. Same thing with the hair follicles, moving slow, hair loss, alopecia. Same thing with your bowels, everything's moving slow, that includes the bowels, constipation, okay? And you just want to make sure that you're continuing to monitor the patient for improvement. How do we know the drug worked? Are those clinical manifestations getting better, right? When you look at slide 12, there's some nursing um, diagnoses associated um, with thyroid hormone, levothyroxine. And like I said, you take, this, you take this drug first thing in the morning, once a day, before breakfast, full glass of water, and don't take anything else for about a half an hour, okay? I'm sure you know that. Okay, I am going to jump ahead to antithyroid drugs. So antithyroid drugs, and that's the methimazole propyl thiuracil, and then even radioactive iodine. So what they do is they inhibit the production of the thyroid hormones. Usually they're given, like I'd said earlier, before surgery to temporarily get the patient into a more euthyroid or normal thyroid state. Okay. And then the radioactive iodine, it'll accumulate in the thyroid gland and literally it will destroy the cells without damaging any other cells in the body because of the iodine. Isn't that amazing? Okay. All right. So let's talk about these drugs and how do we know that they are effective and what are the side effects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you look at the next slide, which is slide number 20, methimazole, propyl thiuracil, used for the medical management of hyperthyroidism. Radioactive iodine, used for extreme cases of hyperthyroidism thyroid cancer, okay, also, and as a pre-treatment before a thyroidectomy, okay, so um, pre-thyroidectomy, okay. Um, when it comes to these drugs, again, the biggest thing with the methimazole and the um, uh, propyl thiuracil are pancytopenia, so you're going to be aware of what's the patient's CBC, how are their red blood cells, how are their white blood cells, how are their platelets? Because the, these drugs do have the potential to cause pancytopenia. Are they a risk for infection? Are they a bleeding risk? And are they anemic? Are they feeling tired, pale, you know, cold all the time? Signs and symptoms of anemia. Um, there are some kind of generalized adverse reactions that are possible. Um, they can have a hay fever-like symptoms, sore throat, that kind of thing. But one of the other things that they can have are paresthesias. The word paresthesia means like pins and needles, numbness and tingling. And so they can experience a new onset of numbness, tingling, usually in the extremities, fingers, toes. Not common, but kind of a generalized reaction. The pancytopenia, which would include a granulocytosis, that's one particular type of white blood cell, granulocytes, they won't have any. When, if they do get that reaction. And that's severe and that's dangerous because they are a risk for infection, okay? Um, you can use both of these when people are pregnant, but you've got to be super careful because they can actually decrease the thyroid um, function in the fetus, okay? And there's always a potential for a bleeding increase if they're being taken with an anticoagulant. And that's really, that's really what you need to know. Um, when the patient goes into surgery to have a thyroidectomy, and I just want to cover this very quickly. Again, we're going to treat them, pre-treat them to suppress the thyroid, right? So we can go in and remove it. But you should know, next to the thyroid gland, you have two smaller glands called parathyroids. They control calcitonin. Calcitonin is a hormone that helps keep the balance of calcium between calcium in your bones and calcium in your serum or blood. Okay, that's what calcitonin does. So after a thyroidectomy, there are two big potential post-op complications. One, believe it or not, it's a thyrotoxic crisis, a thyroid storm. How can that be, you might ask, if we took your thyroid out? If we did not adequately pre-treat you before the surgery, and there's still thyroid hormone floating around, you can go into a thyroid storm immediately after we take out your thyroid. Isn't that fun? So know that. 
Okay, thyrotoxic crisis or thyroid storm is a potential complication of a thyroidectomy. And then the other thing that you need to know with, um, with uh, thyroidectomy, you should always have a trach kit at the bedside, um, just in case, because the thyroid gland is right here, right? And, you know, God forbid there's any kind of a swelling or edema, it may constrict their airway, and that's an issue. And then the other thing, if we accidentally should nick or even remove the para thyroid glands. The patient's going to have neurological symptoms. So if a post-thyroidectomy patient complains of numbness, tingling, there's paresthesias, the first thought that should go through your head is, did we accidentally mess up the parathyroids and now they don't have enough serum calcium because that, that the tingling, that's a sign of hypocalcemia. Okay, just like the Chvostek sign, which is tapping on the facial nerve, and it makes the jaw twitch, okay? So make sure you understand, postoperatively after a thyroidectomy, thyroid storm is possible. And if it occurs, all we do is treat the symptoms, and we have to wait for it to pass. Make sure there's a trach kit at the bedside in case there's any swelling, heaven forbid, afterwards. Um, that's really about it. Make sure that when you're um, assessing your patient, whether it's thyroid hormone or anti, how do we evaluate the effectiveness of the drug? Are their symptoms better? Right. So if a person is hypothyroid, we're giving them levothyroxine. Have they lost some weight? Because they were probably heavy. How do they feel? Do they have a little bit more energy? How are their vital signs? Right. Are they still low or have they come back up to kind of within a more normal range. And then, you know, the opposite when it comes to the antithyroid medications, again, have they gained a little bit of weight? Because people with hyperthyroidism are usually like toothpick skinny. Have they gained a little weight? Are they able, you know, to, to eat more? Like how is their tolerance to heat? Has that gotten a little better? Because they're usually just hot all the time. Hot, hot, hot. So evaluation of the effectiveness of the medication is, is it working? Are their symptoms better? It's pretty straightforward, I think, okay? Um, I don't think there's anything more to say with these meds, um, but remember, you know, people, people kind of minimize um, thyroid issues, but what they don't understand is if you have hyperthyroidism or if you're taking too much of a thyroid hormone like levothyroxine, cardiac involvement is our big concern. Because the patient can have palpitations and dysrhythmias because their heart's just going so fast. I can have a heart attack, an MI. So, you know, thyroid medication is very, very important. So make sure that you remember that, okay? Uh, I think that's all I have. And I guess I will see you next time. All right, now we're moving on to diabetes mellitus. Woohoo! Peace.